Zombies and Decepticons come trying to get me, yo. Man. And Decepticons was not helping me fight the zombies. Hey, folks, man, this is Monk, and we are back with another episode of Classes of Cinematics. And we're joining us always with my co host, we got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo. And today we got a guest, man, from the Concentrated Podcast Network, man. We got um Eric hanging out with us today. What's good? Yeah, man. And, um, you know, they covered um, uh, film, TV, you know, anime, you know, those kind of things. And it's just a fun time, you know, with um, with your co-hosts. You've got uh, Monera and Maria as well. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, they're regularly putting out episodes, you know, on a wide range of subject matter. They got a Marvel show. They got a Star Wars show. And just the regular main show where they mix up the, the content that they're bringing to you, you know. But definitely from a, a nerd, you know, point of view, man. Definitely. And we got one about just British shit. If you're into shit on the BBC <laughs> and Channel Four, and you want to hear people of color talk about British shows and movies, wait for y'all to get on that Top Boy, man. Do I gotta write in? Do I gotta get uh, a signature? They're, okay, they're like, going? oh, we're not gonna do it unless you explain. They don't want to watch the previous seasons. They want to jump straight into the new season that's gonna start. But they want me to explain the past four seasons all in like one episode. See, the the first two of the four, those are easy. They're like. Four episodes yeah, each. Yeah, like four episodes each. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's and British. It's British style TV. Like, you know, like, you know, like, you know. Ten episodes. Yeah, and the British they'll do that thing where they'll do uh, it's a season, but it's like three episodes. I'm like, okay, uh, Black Mirror. Right, <laughs> right. I, I like that. I'm not sitting there for for weeks at a time trying to watch the whole thing. I watched yeah, the first yeah. two seasons of Top Boy in like an afternoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what's up, man. But today, man, it's going to be a special day. We're going to be talking about Return of the Living Dead from 1985. And I was seven years old when I saw this thing. Mm-hmm. Maybe about, yeah, I think I was about seven years old. So the story goes is this, man, it's directed by Dan O'Bannon. Um, and the story is this, when a foreman... Um, when Foreman Frank uh, shows new employee Freddy a secret military experiment in a supply warehouse, the two klutzes accidentally <laughs> release a gas that reanimates corpses in the flesh-eating zombies. As the pandemic or the epidemic <laughs> spreads <laughs> through Louisville, Kentucky, and the creatures satisfy their hunger and gory and outlandish ways, Frank and Freddy fight to survive with the help of their boss and a mysterious mortician. And yeah, this is starring. We got a cast here: Tom Matthews. Uh, we got uh, James Karen, um, Don uh, Kalfa, Clue Gallagher, Brian Peck, um, Linnea Quigley, um, Jonathan Terry. Who else we got on here, man? We got a lot of uh, folks oh, man, here. Man, Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Miguel A. Nunez Jr. Yeah, play well, Spider. He deserves to be a. He's a horror legend. The man has been mm-hmm. in in Return of the Living Dead. He's been in Jason movies. He's been in everything. Beverly Randolph, Jewel Shepard, John Philbin, uh, William Stout, Mark Venturini, um, Kathleen Cordell, James D'Alessandro, and this is a, a few other people. Man, you know what I'm saying. A lot of these folks play fodder, but then there's also a ton of people who play, you know, various zombie characters in, in those scenes and stuff like that. No, not for nothing. Did you see at the end of the cast list they had a picture of Michael Crabtree? <laughs> How they got why? Michael? Why is he here? It says Riot Cop Two. Riot Cop Two. Michael Crabtree. And they got a picture of the old Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> is he old enough? What, he no was like eighty-seven. No he must have been in the sequel. <laughs> or, or one of, you know what I'm saying? One of the various uh, sequels that spun off of this film. Is he a kid cop? Yeah. Uh, but um, Dan O'Bannon, he only directed one other film, and um, but he has a uh, you know a nice uh, writing career. He directed uh, Bloodbath, a film called Bloodbath, and another film called Resurrected. My bad. So two other films. Mm-hmm. But he has writing credits on Dark Star, um, Alien, um, Dead and Buried, Heavy Metal, Blue Thunder. Uh, Life Force, um, Invaders from Mars, and Total Recall, Screamers, and Bleeders. Yeah, he's he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's big with the writing game. His uh, I think mm-hmm. his Bloodbath is a short. 
Um, but the resurrected is based on like a HP Lovecraft. Let's get into it, man. What, what do we like about this film, man? Let's start. Let's start with you, Eric. Give me, give me something you like about this one. Uh, this is one of my all-time favorite movies. Um, actually, I don't know if you guys can see. I'm actually wearing a Return of the Living Dead T-shirt. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. 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 There you go. I and, actually, I didn't even realize I have my my Tar Man pillow on my couch. This, this is my, oh, my pillow most nights. <laughs> and I, hell, mm-hmm. I even talked to you about trying to get that Tar Man tattoo. I gotta I gotta get back with you Ooh. one day and get that. It's one of my all time favorite movies. I love the seriousness of like Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead, but like this and we were discussing it earlier when i first saw it as a kid it terrified me because it like the special effects were so good and it was gory and like it didn't have the rules of like night of the living dead where like you know they mm-hmm. move slow and like these zombies seem to, to do whatever the hell they want and they don't die there's no way to kill them mm-hmm. like you learned that in the beginning where they like they cut the zombie's head off and he's still running around the body's still moving um Ooh. yeah it was gory and then it was funny and i didn't pick up on that until later on when i was a teenager and i watched it again and as an adult um, and I'm a huge fan of like punk music and punk culture in general. So like this was, it, it was something new that they hadn't done. It was one of the first like horror comedies that I really got into. And I didn't realize that was a genre until mm-hmm. I saw a movie like this. So I'm, right. I'm, I'm in it a hundred percent. And I've even watched all of the, the sequels, the terrible ones, the, the less terrible ones. I'm, I'll always come back to Return of the Living Dead. So what would you buy, man? What oh, man. would you well, something you like about this? Man, there's a, there's a laundry list. Like, for starters, like you, Eric, this is my favorite film. You know what I'm saying? This was my first full-length feature horror film. I was six. Me and my brother were tucked off in the hallway watching this film. Moms did not know. And, um, you know, I've, I've loved it. From the first time I now saw you it. know Mama Blockbuster. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Get him. Oh well, we got caught, and then once Trash started doing her dance, you know what I'm saying? Like she was like, "Oh my god, it's too late, can't cover our eyes now." We already saw it, and this was the the movie that also, you know, reassured me that females don't have cooties, you know, because if that was the case, <laughs> Joanna Man wouldn't have got so happy when she started dancing. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but, but I'll. What stood out to me most was how they reinvented the zombie as as a whole. You know what I mean? Like these zombies, they ran, they talked. You know what I'm saying? This is the film that that came up with the whole brains trope. You know what I mean? And so whereas in Romero's film, you know, the zombies, they would just devour and eat people. They didn't care if they was eating your calf, your finger, whatever. You know, they're just going to eat you in, until they're full. Where these zombies, they ate with purpose. You know what I'm saying? There was a reason <laughs> why they were gunning for the brain. You know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, the the little green lady, you know, she explains it somehow. It, it helps the, the pain of being dead, you know, yeah. and, and some kind of way and um you know they also gave us different forms of the zombie you know what i'm saying we had you know tar man who was pretty much in that barrel being preserved in the gas mm-hmm. then you get frank and freddy who slowly turn into zombies from breathing the gas then you get you know the graveyard zombies and then <laughs> like i'm still you know as many times as i have i seen this i'm still kind of confused on how trash turned into a zombie was it because she got bit eaten, the rain, right? or was it the yeah. rain? I think it was the rain. I think it's a mixture of both because she got eaten in the grain in the graveyard, but like nobody else who got bit came back like that. Right. Suicide, he he our man ate him, and then my man with the mohawk, I think his name was Scuzz. Yeah. And uh yeah, neither one of them came back. So I'm like, well, you know, how did she come back? But outside of that, it, I mean it didn't have to make sense. It didn't yeah. have to. Somebody, and and somebody was movie. writing on a on a like a, a whiteboard and was like, "What do we need for this movie? Uh, how about Naked Zombie Queen? Boom, we're gonna do that." <laughs> yeah, there you go. And and she and she did it well. So yeah, I mean that that is always gonna be at the forefront for me. It's just you know because I mean, when you think about the way they brought zombies to light in this film with making them run, this also this is what kind of gave the thought and gave um you know a different look at the zombies that brought us films like 28 Days Later or Army of the Dead. Because before this, zombies were just slow. You could walk around and hit them with yeah. a little juke move and, you know. I, o- you I also know. always enjoyed that they like, they referenced the Romero movie without saying yes. the name of it, but they're like, yeah, you know that <laughs> zombie movie? Well, it's based on a real thing. And like, this is where we got some of those zombies. Um, and that's like, that is the 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 origin of this movie. It's like a right. like a backdoor pilot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or like parts where they're, they're trying to hit the zombies in the brain. It's like, you worked in the it movie. In the movie. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is interesting because like, I feel like a lot of the zombie media, they, they don't acknowledge the fact that 
that zombies exist, like Walking Dead. Like they don't zombie, it, it, you know, they don't acknowledge the fact that the idea of zombies existed in yeah. the world before yeah. they actually yeah. happened. But but this one does, and then it's kind of it's, it's a funny situation. But I do appreciate the, the the comedy of this later. You know, like I said, as a kid, it scared the hell out of me. But but they were full on leaning into that immediately. Mm. I think that's what makes this film work. It's not like we've got accidental jokes in here. We're going full on, um, especially. I love the um the guy working at this warehouse. I mean, it's a essentially it's a medical supply company, so they're you know medical supplies, cadavers, skeletons, things that will probably go out to doctors' offices or classrooms or you know or medical schools or things like that. But but this guy is crazy. I love the um you know the coworker, the older guy that's giving the the new guy the the show of the place and he's so enthusiastic about his job man even to the point where he's trying to scare this guy a little bit mm -hmm. and even the whole idea of the story you know referencing the romero film and then like hey, that was a cover-up that's not what really happened this is and, and it's just so cool because it works man it works in, in this goofy way it gives the, the film enough um substance to, to keep the the story going and just to introduce all of these crazy elements that they're playing with man i love it for that man yeah but you know just like they still they they overemphasize on the co the comedic aspect, this is still a horror film. Oh yeah, by far. You know, it, it has a lot of scary elements. You know, there are still scenes that I'll see. You know, even right now that are just like, oh man, like when when <laughs> Freddie fully transitions after they throw the the acid in his eyes and everything. Yeah. I mean, he looks creepy, man. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that and and just the 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 dialogue feels more realistic than something of like a night of the living dead dawn of the dead like even back to to um to what's his name freddie and his co-worker like talking about the the basic office dynamics and when they decide to call the boss in and he like stops freaking out and he's like whoa, 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 hang on i gotta fix my hair <laughs> he calls frank at home oh. Hurt. <laughs> yeah. <My> problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even even more than that, like the the visuals in this movie were amazing. Yes. Like even that it's one of the main reasons why Tarman has become such an iconic character is because yeah. up until that point you've never seen a character like him. Mm -hmm. Right. Like he looks gross, he looks decayed, but he still looks scary. Mm -hmm. and, and he's like just goofy and he's talking, man. Like they, yeah. I think that's the yeah. biggest aspect of this man because those other zombies they were not talking and then you've got weird like like, like pretty much a wide representation of body types man we, yes. we've got this small person and you've got um people out here with that are missing limbs you know and, and it's crazy man just the the variety that they jammed into the, to this film you know and with this with this really small budget you know they're able to cram all of this creativity into it and i think sometimes that helps having a smaller budget and having to stretch it. It forces the people involved to be more creative and yeah. just dig a little deeper. Like, yo, what can we do with what we got? And, yeah, and this got, film is a testament to that, man. Got to get real resourceful, mm -hmm. you know. And then, and not for nothing, even though it was a low budget film, the special effects they they still hold up now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it looks great every time I watch it. I'm like, man, you know. It, like I wouldn't even want to see this film if it was saturated with CGs. I just I don't I don't think it would hit the same. No, mm -hmm. no, it would it would be very weird to see because like even even later on when they got a little bit more budget and they did Return of the Living Dead two, which is like in some points it's really funny. It got watered down. It's nowhere near as gory as the first one. But um, Freddie and Frank mm -hmm. are essentially the exact same characters in the, in the sequel and even comment about how they feel like they've done this before because the same <laughs> right. thing happens to them so was it was that a pure sequel or was it more of a reboot or a remake no it's a pure sequel yeah, they just pure sequel. They lean they, way more heavy on the on the comedy aspect mm -hmm. yeah they reference yeah. the events of the first movie but just like they did with Night of the living dead they reference it as, as like a cover up and then the third mm -hmm. one is all over the place where it's it's supposed to be like a, a Romeo and Juliet love story with zombies and, and Chicano <laughs> gangs and yeah, weird yeah, body modifications. <laughs> yeah, the third one, the only thing I really liked about the third one was the the look of the chick when she goes full on zombie, like how they, yeah. they go like take the, the mutilation approach and but she looked really cool. But outside of that, yeah, the story was just Yeah. The uh, special uh, effects hold up though. Just yeah. like in the in the first one, like you're at that point you're not watching yeah. for the story 
Right. Yo, they are really treating people's heads like 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 fruit bowls, yo. They just yeah. going in. I'm just looking at some look like, at this in the background right now. And you know, not for nothing, I was uh, I was looking at some facts about this movie. They said there were some of the extras actually ate real brains. They weren't human brains, but they were like Yeah, they were like uh brains. like pig or cat brains. Yeah. yeah. That's too much, man. They could have just put some ramen. You know what I'm saying? Let them sit in the water and, and over, over boil, man. Get a couple noodles and ramen. Don't get the same as cat brain. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to tell the difference, man. It, it's crazy, man. Um, but I do like the aspect too of the, um, you know, just the, the small town thing. We got. I think it just takes place in Kentucky. Yeah, that's one of the things that always confused me. What it, that it was uh, supposed to be Kentucky. I didn't even know they had a punk rock scene in Kentucky. Yep. <laughs> that's, the, that's the part that gets me. Yo, it's like, yo, this is this is nuts to me. But it does fit in with the small town vibe of you know Pittsburgh, you know Night of the Living Dead, and then we've got um, you know this um, you know this this locale. But do like just the the you know that like everything feels real, man. All the yeah. characters you know feel real. The people involved in it, the the even when he goes to the to the Undertaker, like like it's like they they got this problem. It's like because the crazy thing about you can't kill these things, dude. Yeah. There's no way to kill them unless you totally burn them, and that's kind of what creates the bigger problem, man. Yep. So they take him to the mortician to his crem crematorium, and then they, they 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 burn one of these guys, and that puts it into the air and end the rainstorm. And it's boom. Now you've got a town wide, city wide problem, you know, something that probably could have been contained if they hadn't went this route, but now it's over, man. Cats out of the bag and we got problems, bro. <laughs> it was a yep. good idea. I'll give him that. Yeah, it was. It was. I'm giving that yeah. Hey, back against the wall, why not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But still and yeah, and to your point as well, I love that abstract group of friends, dude. Like they, the, the, yeah, the they don't they seem are, like they should work together. Like you have some no, that are like hardcore I mean, punks, you have some that are more mods. I was yeah, like, this my, is my a one, good group. One dude is like kind of so dressed like, just like her. Her. someone just just like hot topic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then you got Freddie's girlfriend is just like it's like where do you fit into the mix? It's like your parents actually let you stay out this late? <laughs> let you hang with hang with these people? <laughs> This is like drop me off at the at the beginning of the block. I'll walk home from here. <laughs> my folks can't see me hanging out with you guys. <laughs> and my man suicide is so angry. It's like, why are you even around him? He just he's like, man, y'all just want me for my ride. Give me gas he's money, late, though. <laughs> what? They really did just hang out with him for his car. Yeah. I always love that that scene where he's like, "You think this is a fucking costume? <laughs> this is a way of life." <laughs> Otherwise, I can't see no other values to this guy's personality. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, and, uh, stay away from me. But <laughs> yeah. like, I'm also not the type that would have done that. Like, if I couldn't stand his personality, I'm not getting this ride. I'm not taking this ride. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like just, just like after when, when Trash was trying to hit on him and uh, the chick with the blue hair and the, mm -hmm. uh, the dude wearing the little blazer, yeah. they were talking about, like, where's suicide at? He walks by. She was like, speak of the devil. He's like, oh, booster. And it's what? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think you're angry for. I think my shallowness manifested differently, bro. I wasn't yeah. gonna put you for a ride, right? <laughs> Especially not. I mean, it looked like his caddy was on his last leg, anyways, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was, yeah, man, he's he's definitely that friend that you know is gonna bring down the whole fucking vibe. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah. you know what? When it was time to ride, he was front and center. He's yeah. that's why that's why Tarman got him first. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, like I said, man. It, like, I, I just love the fact that they are leaning into the to the satire. Like, it, it's crazy because, I mean, at this point, have there been a lot of zombie movies since Night of the Living Dead? I know there were others, but but I think this is probably the most significant one since then. You know, There's a and, lot of the Italian zombie movies, the the oh, zombies, yeah. things like that. But like, none of them ever leaned into the comedy of it. Like, right. and this was like. This was actually, and it's funny because I have the poster literally over my shoulder. This is almost around the exact same time as Repo Man. Um, and that's another one that explored like punk culture, but also had like, was kind of darkly comedic. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it, it leaned into some of the same uh, themes. Just got really horrific with it. Whereas mm -hmm. Repo Man is more sci-fi. And you know, they said that this film, since it came out before Day of the Dead, it like really messed up the numbers for Day of the Dead because everyone now had a new impression of what zombies are capable of doing. And in Day of the Dead, it was still what we were used to seeing in the Romero films. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. doubt that too, because a lot of people probably also got confused by the titling and thought maybe it's a sequel to Dawn of the Dead. Right. And they yeah. got something completely yeah. different. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is way different, man. Like, like even now, like we've got the uh, the 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 uh, I guess I don't know what what is the character called the the one zombie the, that was the, that that explained the brains yeah. man, coming off in the background. I was always calling her the green check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was one thing that stood out to me as a kid because I remember watching it and it was so horrifying, but also kind of like it's kind of pitiful because it's like on one hand you know you got these these creatures that are trying to kill everybody but then when they explain it you're like damn you know i do got a little bit of sympathy you yeah. know if you were messed up and had happened to be in this state and your only reprieve was to eat brains you probably gonna be eat brain eating you know <laughs> but, but at the same time they they the zombies were smarter like when they first send the ambulance and the, the zombies eat the the paramedics and the one gets on he's like send yeah. more paramedics yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean he, he probably like how they taste it and i love the part when when uh when the mortician uh ernie when he goes out he closes the ambulance door and then you see like the little zombie don't have no limbs he's like ah! it's like oh there's always got to be a run you know he's like he's got to wait for everyone else to eat before he gets his fill yeah, <laughs> like, it was more like, terrifying than anything because it was fast yeah i know the way he was moving <laughs> it's almost like you're at a restaurant and you tried the poppers and like man these poppers slamming let's get some more to give some, some yeah. we need some more of those and send us another order and it was just creepy too the way that uh i guess this was all animatronic too man yeah. the way like because you know hanging in the table and it's just oh she's it's just definitely crazy. animatronic and yeah. it's small because like the attention to detail they got her spine flapping yeah, around spine. Yeah. he didn't actually have the spinal fluid yeah you know yeah yeah man because she just jacked up the one dude um you know right before the, the yeah court, no, 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 no. yeah it's wild man it's, it's one of these things that, that definitely stands out above the genre and, 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 and i mean the premise of not, is simple enough, but it's one that I feel like um, it, it it doesn't deserve to be this good, man. It mm. doesn't deserve to have come out the way that it did, but it did, man. And, 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 and like to this day, this thing still um, stands out, man. That, and yep. It's because it gives us a little more than just zombies, you know. Like at, at this point, once they're they're shacked up in the in the funeral home or mortician home, whatever, it, it turns into a siege film. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then it's that fight for survival. And and that's also like it, it carries heavy because at that same time that's when they're still trying to look out for Frank and Freddie, but they're slowly transitioning too. And they the the zombies that they turn into that's a whole nother element. Like Freddie, when once he goes full on zombie, I mean he's all the way aggressive and he's yeah. he's head hunting for his girlfriend. It's like damn dude, like, mm-hmm. why, why you want to hurt her the most? I thought you were supposed to love her. You know <laughs> Whereas yeah. Frank goes the opposite way. He feels guilty and like crawls into the incinerator and burns himself up. You know, like, not damn, for you that like part of me. I feel sad. Like like yeah. the music that they're playing and everything. And just on that note too, I love the score. Dude, when when once that smoke first goes up, yeah, man, revs me up every time. I actually have that in my uh, in my my playlist when I go out on jogs and stuff. When that thing comes on, I mm-hmm. switch gears. <laughs> I, I had the the one song what was it? Do you want to party? As my alarm clock for the longest time when the <laughs> zombies first start coming back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, That'll man. get you going in the morning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I always like when they play around with just historical elements, and like I say, man, them tracing that that thing back to the army experiment, and then this in the era. I mean, there 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 is some truth to the fact that the army does all kinds of crazy shit that we don't know about. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is exaggerated that this thing be zombies, but but just imagine the amount of army things that or money that is without. We know that they are do have a robust research program i'm not saying it gets as crazy as reanimating corpses or anything like that but 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 it makes it a little bit more adds a stamp of reality to it just mm-hmm. by you know grounding the the, the 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 theory in this whole army situation yeah there's some gas and in, in this thing and, and they, they're hiding you know these bodies and stuff you know from this experiment back in the day they're spread out throughout the country so so it does add an interest in um you know layer you know to to to, to storytelling yeah absolutely and the fact that they give the disclaimer at the beginning (laughs) (laughs) i mean i I had i was well into my teenage years before i was convinced that this was not based on real stuff (laughs) you know yeah i I was little and saw it i was like wait is that shit real what they would lie I remember, yeah, the second time I watched it, my brother, like, before we watched it, he was like, yeah, Bob, this is real, man. You, you, uh, we didn't see this at the beginning, but this is real, bro. This is real. Look, I'm going to show you. And then I saw it. I was like, oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, that's, what older, that's what an older brother should do. He should fuck with you the whole time. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. They definitely um, did a great job leaning into this, man. And honestly, it, I feel like this definitely was probably more inspirational to, to Shaun of the Dead, you know, than the others. It's, it's like, this probably gave them the idea to make a, a zombie movie satire, but then, you know, you're throwing in those elements from the other films. But uh, honestly, I don't think these things are zombies, man, in the traditional sense. They're, they're walking, they're talking, they're moving with a purpose. These are totally the opposite of... I think that's probably why we got the return of the living dead instead of the, the return of the zombies or zombie. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. crazy. Well, they, they completely rewrote their own rules. Like, they didn't want to be, yeah. like, like, they didn't want to be uh, uh, upholding to the Night of the Living Dead rules. Like, oh, we got to move slow and you hit them in the head, they die. Like, no, that seems boring. Like, if you had as many people as you do in this movie, you would have been able to take out, like, hell, the two, the three people in the warehouse took out the one zombie on their own. Like, traditionally, they would have been done. That's the end of the story. You know, we hit him in the head with the pickaxe, it's done. But, you know, when you move the axe and he's still moving, like, that that brings a whole other level to it. Well, and it's a testament to the originality, and that's what we're lacking in modern day film. You know, they, I mean, they went balls to the wall with this one, and yeah, we're well, that, not and, scared and, of the outcome. And most of the time now, like you, they feel like you have to give a reason as to why it's different. Whereas yeah. with this, there's like, no, it, it's not like the movie, and that's literally the the whole sum of it is is in that sure. one line. It works in the movie. Well, this isn't that movie. Right. It's like they took a good idea and then made it their own. And that's OK. I mean, we, we all we all take cookies out of that jar in life. But, you know, they, they were able to create their own lane. And that's what makes this movie so, so fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I, even, I, I even like as it gets toward the conclusion, man, uh, one of the things that, that, that stood out to me that I thought was hilarious was the. Uh, the, the the number the eight hundred number on the canisters. Yeah, <laughs> and the thing is, like, I would have been called that number, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, my man. But see, why you ain't call us food? I see now that I think about it, honestly, they didn't know what was going to happen with that number, and we see what's going to happen when, when they mm-hmm. call that number. They, there's no, um, what's going on there? I, they just like, yo, wherever this call came from, yep. it's in the nukes. Yep. You know? <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't take any time to figure out. What the situation was, or can we, can we contain it? Can we just send some guys in there and and eliminate threat? No, like if you call that number, you was getting them nukes dropped on you. <laughs> so, and that, like you said, that also kind of brings to that that realistic element because you know that's to to my knowledge what you know the army or the military officials will do when things get out of hand. Eliminate the problem, sweep it under the what, rug. Yeah. I don't know what nukes or they were just regular bombs. I think they were supposed to be like like low yield nukes. Wow. So something they, something they like what was um, yeah, like what was uh, dropped on like Hiroshima, where they were like mm-hmm. enough to destroy the city but not radiate everything forever. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I believe the actual like uh, cannons were like howitzers. Mm. Yeah, that, that's the crazy thing because um, one of the aspects like I can't remember, dude, because I, I tried to I started last night to rewatch it, but I fell asleep. But um. But yeah, so so at the end, is, is, the, is the town totally destroyed? Oh yep. yeah, yeah. They, well, that's the that's the funny part. Like they call in and they're like, "Oh, okay, we'll take care of it." And they reach out to the general, who that's another su- uh, subplot where he's been looking for these canisters. Um, and his wife is mad at him. Uh, and that that part always got yeah, me. So yeah, like, it was a very that. nice house. And uh, at that point, the technology that he has was basically a fax machine. But it was supposed to be the most high tech shit ever. <laughs> and he gets the yeah, call. He's like, hey, in that big China cabinet. Yeah, like, that's the biggest computer ever. Nowadays, you could literally do all of that from one iPhone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, had a whole room put in for that shit. Yeah, he. Uh, yeah. They call them, and then they report it to to the general, and the general gets the coordinates, and then he calls into um, to one of the fire stations, and they're like, "Yeah, here's the coordinates. Do it." And they they basically blow up the entire city. But it um, it has the same effect as when they cremated the first body. So like all the ash and everything goes into the clouds and rains more and makes it even worse. And that's how the yeah. movie ends. And it's so messed up too because when Bert initially makes the call, once they they find out what's going on, they tell him, "Yeah, we got a contingency plan." Yeah. And he gets off the phone. He's like, "Yeah, man, they got yeah. a plan. They're gonna this. sort this shit out. Of course, they got a yeah. plan." <laughs> While they sit in the shed, oh, I wonder what the plan is. Yeah, <laughs> and then everybody stops. It's like, what's that sound? And you hear it's that whistle coming from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, man, um, um, Joanna, man, he might be the first black guy to make it through the end of the horror movie, but you realize everybody dies because of the 
Because when he nukes, he he bomb. died because of the the zombies. Like he <laughs> yeah, yeah, made yeah, it. That, that is true. He's the but, only one that really stepped up and like like held yeah. on his own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then they they the, the whole town is gone, man. Once you yeah. hit those bombs, but but it is fun, man. I, but hold up, they dropped the bomb, but didn't there somebody else came out? Hold up, I'm looking at this final few minutes. <laughs> oh yeah, the party yeah, starts. No, the, yeah. the zombies start popping back up. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Damn, dude. Yeah. Oh, he opens his mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Party <laughs> time. Yeah. I mean, it's a great film, man. Like, like, um, like I said, man, it, it took me a while to get over my um childhood trauma to even be able to watch this again. But, but I think I had hit maybe in my mid twenties. I hit a phase where. Cause the horror used to really jack me up when I was a kid, and mm-hmm. I went through a phase where I just started rewatching some of this older stuff, and I was like, "Yo, this was hilarious!" Like, and, and I realized why my parents were watching these films then, you know, because yeah. you know these things were fun. They were, you know, yeah, you got the the gore and the you know those elements, but a lot of them, you know, at that time they kind of broke ranks where they were adding the comedy element to them or they were just so over the top that they were funny, you know, it's like right. cartoonish violence and just, um, you know, ridiculous plot lines. But, you know, and this definitely upset out when I rewatched, I was like, yo, this was great. This was like a really good film, you know, for what it was at, at the time, man. And it still holds up to this day, man. It's a fun watch, man. You know, absolutely. And, you know, you can tell that they were having fun during production as well. Like it, it, this, I mean, this film is just, it's full of fun. And I was reading this article, you know, the red and white jacket that Freddie wears mm-hmm. due to censorship for the, the, the release that was for the movies, the back of his jacket says F you, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, but for the cut that they made for television on the back of his jacket, it says television version. <laughs> so they were- Consciously, while they, they were consciously it, aware, but his yeah. they said right. that that TV version is one of the hardest versions to find. Mm-hmm. I, I can imagine as well, like like because this is an era where you can't just CG things, mm-hmm. so it's probably like, yo, we gotta have these two jackets, <laughs> and, and, you know, to put. But I mean, you can just tell that they funny because I mean, what, <laughs> to put television version on the back of the jacket, mm-hmm. it's like, dude, yeah. that's, that's a joke in itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, it's crazy, man. So what what else um uh, got uh in the uh. <laughs> Facts or you know or, or hidden uh, <laughs> hidden uh, tips or or hidden facts about this film. I was there's a couple of books written about like the history of the Return of the Living Dead series. Um, what is it? The the complete history of the Return of the Living Dead is a really good one. They have a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Um, there's there's a lot of like um, what is her name? Lena Quigley is is like a legitimate scream queen basically based off of this movie and uh was it night of the demons and a couple of other movies she she still does like all the conventions and whatnot and still you know is is happy to talk about this movie where you know where some people after they do a movie like this they never want to hear about it again and they don't want to talk to fans about it like Mm -hmm. she's like no i was in this movie and that was great (laughs) yeah yeah that's what's up man yeah they said they wanted um i was gonna say uh, uh, oh go ahead no, I was gonna say you're probably saying the same thing I am about Liam um, uh, Leslie Nielsen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Leslie Nielsen was originally offered the role of uh, of Bert, but they, they weren't offering. Uh, that would have been crazy, dude. Yeah, yeah they also it makes sense I'm... though, because yeah, this time in the '80s, Leslie Nielsen was was doing Police Academy and um, you know Twilight Zone and a whole bunch of other like big name shit. So. Oh, he was smelling his biscuits. He was like, "Man, I'm not gonna, <laughs> not gonna risk my career on this movie." Yeah, they yep. said uh, they wanted to get uh, Toby Hooper to uh, originally direct this uh, film, and you know, but that didn't work out. I think we got a good enough result, you know, based on this. I don't know what Toby Hooper would have done if he would have went to the more <laughs> massacre part two. Mm-hmm. I feel you like know, he, he did. Or... Like he might have turned this down, but like i think he was filming texas chainsaw massacre 2 at the same time or around the same time and texas chainsaw massacre 2 was what he wanted where with the first one where they wouldn't let him like he wanted to to be funnier and they wouldn't let him be funny so like when he did the second one and it was through the canon film group with uh you know we all know uh, all the fun things that they put out in the 80s they just gave him free reign and he made part two into a comedy and that's why it's one of my favorite it is my favorite texas chainsaw massacre movie yeah because it leans heavy into the absurd. Yes. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Chop top. <laughs> um, and this film did pretty good. I mean, they spent $4 million. They got $14 million back, you know, at the box office. 
And that's not even counting. I think the bulk of this film probably raked their money with VHS rentals. Yeah. And, you know, and even to this day, DVD, DVD and Blu ray. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it definitely became a cult classic. Mm-hmm. Big time. And you know, uh, another thing I'm looking at, um, a little fact they uh they said with all of the different releases sometimes there are voice alterations like uh with some of the zombies in the vhs version tar man's voice is a little deeper a little more like gnarly some of the zombies like the one that called for the paramedics it's a little more like gurgly and things like that but as we get into the dvd releases the the voices change slightly like they're a little more high pitched and stuff mm-hmm. like that yeah i don't know like how they would do that maybe they, they mess with the audio a little bit or something but like, I, yeah, I know they could always go in and like ADR it. Because my yeah. the, the version of Tar Man that I always remember is like more brain, more brain, yeah, exactly. yeah. little echoey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, another thing too that's interesting. Um, Simpsons creator Mac Roney actually came up with the tagline for this film: "They're back from the grave and ready to party." So that's a pretty interesting fact right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I don't know, man. I think that's it, dude. Like, like this thing is definitely one I think holds up as a classic in so many ways, and it's just a a great watch, man. Uh, it's funny because you know I've been uh, friends with Eric on uh, Facebook for years now, and every you know July third, you know I see him firing up this film because it is you have it takes to. Place uh, of July, the movie man. starts July July third, nineteen eighty four, at five thirty p.m. Eastern time. Yep. Ooh, so that's yeah. really when I will, I will watch it. So, like next week, you'll see me, you know, doing my yearly rewatch. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, man, and it's just a great thing in general, man. Just to watch, man. If you want to see, you know, what could happen when people who are just in on it, you know, make a, a, a satirical, you know, film with this kind of material, man. Like, I feel like, man, it's, it's crazy. There are some great horror comedies out there, but this might be one of the very first ones, man, that, that actually, you know, tried that premise and knocked it out of the park, you know? Oh, all day. Yeah, this will forever and always be my number one favorite film for various reasons, be them personal or just, you know, cinematic value, but I I will never have nothing negative to say about this film. Like, when, when anyone comes over to the house and I, if I ask them, like, yo, you seen Return of the Living Dead? If they say no, it's like, I mean, I hope you got about an hour and a half on your hands. That's what <laughs> you I, I, watch try, I try now. every year to get folks over here to watch it with me when I do the July 3rd rewatch and nobody, so it's usually just me sitting on my couch with my dog watching it. Like, all right, well, sucks you to be y'all. I'm going to watch this movie. And I'm like, right. some, we might have to set up like... Next I'm gonna time give me you some do it. And, and get down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Next time you do it, let me know, and, and I'll hit play the same time you hit play, and then we can just have a fucking chat going on and just right. talking shit mm-hmm. as we're watching it, man. I think that would be fun, man. But, um, yeah, yeah, any final thoughts uh, about I mean, like I said, to anyone who hasn't seen it, do yourself a favor and go watch it. Watch it a couple times, you know what I mean? Because it's, it's, it's well worth it. And after the first viewing you'll start to notice other little things, you know what I'm saying, on on multiple rewatches, you know what I'm saying, little things that you might not catch the first time around. But, yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I love this movie. Uh, ain't, ain't nothing bad I got to say about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same for me, man. Yeah. So <laughs> but, it's uh, a personal all-time favorite of mine. And it's, it's ridiculously short. Like, the movie picks up very fast and, like, mm-hmm. gets things, you know, I think it's it's, like, less than 90 minutes. Or it might be exactly 90 minutes with credits and everything. So it's really mm-hmm. short. It's really fun. It's really silly. So, like, it, it, there's something for everyone. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. They, did, they didn't waste any time, you know, with the... You no, know, some, some films linger on certain moments too long and some, you know, but this thing is definitely, man, took advantage of the time that it had on the screen, man. Feel yeah, because like while you're... While you're like while you're hanging out with the punks in the in the cemetery, also fun fact: the cemetery is named Resurrection Cemetery, which is just a great Easter egg. Like you have everything going on in the warehouse with the first couple of zombies and Tar Man before they even like they don't move over to the to the warehouse until the acid rain starts. Yeah, right. yeah, definitely, man. It's great, great, man. But uh, I think that's it, man. So we're gonna wrap this up, folks, man. Thanks for checking us out, man. Subscribe to the channel. We're gonna be back for more. I think we got uh, Brandon Lee's The Crow coming up. Uh, nice. We got uh, GI Joe the movie. Uh, I don't know what else we got after that. Did we, uh, we just dropped Sandlot. Yeah, we did just put out the sand lot, so <laughs> you know. So yeah, we keep them coming, too. man. We got y'all yeah, on the rock and roll for the flurry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, catch me at Monkey Blood on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, follow us um, at Classics of Cinematics on Instagram. You know, we'll give you you know clues of what we're dropping next, man, as well as 
know, other announcements and stuff like that so you can interact with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, where can we find you at, Eric? Uh, we're all over. ConcentratedPodcast.com, uh, mm-hmm. Instagram and Twitter, at ConcentratedPod. Um, yeah, we, we got drops multiple times throughout the week, so something for everybody if you're if you're looking for, you know, for some, some mm-hmm. fun perspective. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, we're, we're tackling just about everything. I think this week we're, we're going through, like, um, whatever we, we've been checking out in the month of June, because there's a lot of stuff that dropped, like the Umbrella Academy and shit like that, so... Plus, you know, movies and theaters. Yeah, definitely. Good stuff. And it's Bobby Blockbuster. You can catch me at Bobby Blockbuster 118 on Instagram. And remember, classics are cinematics. It's a way of life. <laughs> All right, folks, man. Peace.